The Power of Awareness, Chapter 19, Essentials, written by Master Teacher and Mystic Neville Goddard in 1952. This is a reading accompanied by explanatory commentary and understanding given by instructor and coach Robert Mead. This chapter from Neville is absolutely essential, and I encourage you to stay to the very end if you want to fully grasp the three steps that Neville gives. He clearly lays them out, and I will highlight how you can implement them into your life today. These three steps are keys. In fact, they are so important and so absolutely necessary to using the law of assumption successfully that I would encourage you to pause the video for a moment here and get a notebook, pen and paper, and make sure you write out exactly in detail how you will start using these today. And you'll be able to do that again by the end of the video. You'll be able to start using it immediately. Chapter 19, Essentials. The essential points in the successful use of the law of assumption are these. First, and above all, yearning, longing, intense, burning desire. The first step in changing the future is desire. That is, define your objective. Know definitely what you want. When you see the words yearning and longing, it gives the feeling and the idea that this is something that maybe you have already wanted for years. Maybe you wanted this years ago and it never happened for you. It may be a goal or a desire or something you wanted to see in your life that maybe you gave up on a long time ago. Bring that back into your vision. Write it down in that notebook in front of you, pen and paper. At the top of it, write down my goal. Underneath, let your pen flow. If you could have, do, or be anyone that you would like to be, what would that be? If you could have in your life, accomplish in your life, something that you've always wanted to do, what would it be? What would that look like? Write it out. Now go back and look at it. Reread it. Is this really something you can get intense about? Something you really, really desire? Something you could even refer to as, it's my burning desire to have and be this. If not, if this isn't something that really stirs your heart, that you'll be able to really get behind and give your full attention to, go back and revise it. So again, the first step in changing the future is having a specific desire that is defining your objective and knowing definitely what you want. Neville continues, with all your heart, you must want to be different from what you are. Intense, burning desire combined with the intention to make good is the mainspring of action, the beginning of all successful ventures. In every great passion, which achieves its objective, desire is concentrated and intentioned. You must first desire and then intend to succeed. So this must be a goal that you can truly become passionate about something that you will stay with and fully intend to follow through with following the steps we are here outlining. 
Neville now illustrates this with a poem. Notice this story is about a heart, H-A-R-T, which is a male deer. Imagine a deer in the forest, and he's very thirsty and hungry, and he's looking for a fresh spring water brook to get a drink. Also, he's hungry, so he's not a narrow focus. He knows exactly what he wants. And he's intent on getting it. And it reads, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Here the soul is interpreted as the sum total of all you believe, think, feel, and accept as true. In other words, your present level of awareness. God, I am, is the power of awareness, the source and fulfillment of all desire, understood psychologically. I am an infinite series of levels of awareness, and I am what I am in accordance with where I am in that series. This quotation describes how your present level of awareness longs to transcend itself. So Neville speaks of our present level of awareness being all that we currently believe, think, and feel, and accept. In other words, your limited beliefs and success at the moment is who you are. So that's your current level of of awareness, your I amness at the moment. However, I love how he describes that I am an infinite series of levels. And you actually have this longing to raise yourself beyond and above where you're at and achieve your goal. And in that poem that uh, also stated, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. This is not perhaps the righteousness that you're familiar with in any religious sense or moral sense. Righteousness is defined clearly in the next paragraph. Notice, righteousness is the consciousness of already being what you want to be. Now, we're going to highlight how to get that state of consciousness fully in step three, but first let's move to step two, the second thing that needs to be done amongst these three steps. Here's the second step, very, very essential, and that is second, cultivate physical immobility, a physical incapacity not unlike the state described by Keats in his Ode to Nightingale, a drowsy numbness pains my senses as though hemlock I had drunk. It is a state akin to sleep, but one in which you are still in control of the direction of your attention. Now, here's where I'm going to invite you to stay with me here. I want you to understand the second step. I know Neville's language is very deep and sometimes complex. So let's break this down. It's really actually very simple. He's talking about physical immobility, a physical incapacity. It's self-induced. It's a drowsy state. He also refers to it, as you see, a state akin to sleep. So this is a condition or state that's similar to sleep, but not quite sleep. Scientifically described, very simply, there's basically five levels of brainwave activity. Normally, we spend most of our time in beta, which is actually, uh, we're in anxiety, we're active, we're externally uh, attentive, and perhaps uh, also somewhat relaxed. Sometimes we're in the higher level, which is gamma, which is intense concentration when you're in an activity. Now, below gamma, then beta, alpha 
is the state that we really are shooting for. This is that drowsy state where alpha brainwave is when you are very relaxed, passive. Okay, so this is most easily accomplished either laying back in a chair or laying on your back in bed. And then this is actually a meditative condition. So this is actually meditation. What we're really talking about here is that you're going to use a relaxed meditation to focus on your desire and imagine it as true. And that's where that third step comes in. So number one, we have our desire. Secondly, we know that we need to use this meditation. I'm going to leave you a link to a Two of my best videos on meditation, you'll see either above and also in my description, and I encourage you to have a look at those to fully understand this step two of meditation and how important it is. Again, see my videos on my channel about meditation, and they will help you tremendously to learn how to induce this state, this meditation. As Neville continues here, You must learn to induce this state at will. But experience has taught me that it is more easily induced after a substantial meal or when you wake in the morning, feeling very loath to rise. Then you're naturally disposed to enter this state. The value of physical immobility exposes itself in the accumulation of mental force which absolute stillness brings with it. It increases your power of concentration. Simply put, being in this relaxed meditative state puts our brain waves in a relaxed receptive state. In that alpha brainwave state, which is also called the alpha meditative state or condition, your mind is relaxed Anxieties are freed from the day as you let yourself relax. Then you're able to, in a very relaxed manner, focus on your goal and on your desire. And your brain, your mind, and your subconscious mind then becomes receptive to sounding it down into that subconscious level where everything then takes place and is manifested in the outer world. So basically, this meditation is very, very important in order for us to sound down that desired goal into our hearts and have it be manifested in our lives. Neville further emphasizes the importance of this immobilized, quiet, drowsy, meditative brainwave state saying, in fact, the greater energies of the mind seldom break forth save when the body is stilled and the door of the senses closed to the objective world. And now step three. The third and last thing to do is to experience in your imagination what you would experience in reality had you achieved your goal. Now notice, you must gain it in imagination first. For imagination is the very door to the reality that which you seek. But use imagination masterfully. And not as an onlooker thinking of the end, but as a partaker thinking from the end. This is a very, very uh, interesting difference. The difference between thinking of it and thinking from it. So, for an example, if you were to desire a new automobile, you picked out the color, you know, the type of vehicle, all the various things about it that has drawn you to that car that you want to buy, that automobile. Now, you can imagine yourself driving that car, can't you? You can see yourself driving down the road, enjoying that car. And that would be thinking of it, thinking about it and thinking of it. Thinking from it 
means you are in it. So in this case, you would be sitting in the car, looking throughout your eyes, over your knuckles, over your hands, holding the wheel, looking out the window, feeling your backside on the beautiful leather seats, smelling that new car smell, feeling the air conditioning or the windows down, hearing the beautiful stereo system of that car. You're actually in it, enjoying it, being it. You're there. It's yours. So you are then meditating and thinking from it, imagining being in it versus looking from afar as if you were watching yourself on a movie screen. Very, very big difference there between thinking of it and about it, daydreaming about that versus Imagining yourself actually in it and experiencing it, which is much more powerful. As Neville continues, we see that we want to imagine that we already possess that which we desire. It's ours already. He continues, imagine that you possess a quality or something you desire, which hitherto has not been yours. Surrender yourself completely to this feeling until your whole being is possessed by it. Again, here we get the spirit of of this, that we need to have the desire be something that we have a burning desire for, a passion for, and therefore we're willing to surrender ourselves to it psychologically, emotionally, mentally, being able to imagine and immerse ourselves in it, literally feeling that our whole being is possessed by it. And so we're not talking about daydreaming or just blissfully thinking about the possibilities. No, we're talking about an intense use of your controlled imagination. Notice how Neville states it. This state differs from reverie, which is daydreaming. In this respect, it is the result of a controlled imagination and a steady, concentrated attention, whereas reverie is a result of an uncontrolled imagination, usually just daydreaming. Neville now brings in, ties together the meditation we spoke about in step two. He ties it together with step one and two, knowing what we want and imagining it real. Notice, in the controlled state, that is the meditative state, A minimum of effort suffices to keep your consciousness filled with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. The physical and mental immobility of this state is a powerful aid to voluntary attention and a major factor of minimum effort. Now Neville ties all three together. Your goal the meditation, and the powerful use of imagination, saying the application of these three points. Number one, desire. Number two, physical immobility. And number three, the assumption of the wish already fulfilled. Make sure you're clear on this. The desire is your goal. Having a burning, passionate desire for something specific to change in your life. Be it that career, the new partner, the better health. A major move in your life. Something that you want to see change in your life. For the better. A transformation even. That specific desire. Number two. Immobility. Physical immobility is that alpha state meditation. And number three, the assumption of the wish already fulfilled is using your imagination to think from your desired state, imagining that you already are, assuming that you already have that which you desire to possess. 
Now, this is what he continues to do for us in explaining it. Those three things, he goes on to say, is the way to atonement or at one or union with your objective. The first point, desire, is thinking of the end with the intention to realize it. The third point, the assumption of the wish fulfilled, is thinking from the end. It's already yours. With the feeling of accomplishment. The secret of thinking from the end is to enjoy being it. The minute you make it pleasurable, and imagine that you are it. You start thinking from the end. What a critical point for us to really understand. And that is that you want to have it be something that you really, if accomplished, would bring you great joy and pleasure, a sense of accomplishment, something you really want badly and would make your life feel and be amazing. The more so it is like that, pleasurable, the easier it is to dwell in it and think from it and bring it into your actual world faster. So stay tuned for the bonus I'm going to give you. It's going to come at the end of the video, and I'm going to keep that short, but it's very, very a powerful way that you can imagine it now and get that feeling of possessing it now already. So hang on for that. Let's finish our wonderful reading of this beautiful chapter 19 of The Power of Awareness. Neville continues, One of the most prevalent misunderstandings is that this law works only for those having a devout or religious objective. This is fallacy. It works just as impersonally as the law of electricity works. It can be used for greedy, selfish purposes, as well as noble ones. But it should always be borne in mind that ignoble thoughts and actions inevitably result in unhappy consequences. Yes, Neville always encouraged us to keep the golden rule in mind and have upbuilding beneficial goals. Okay, it's bonus time. Neville said it would be much more effective if we had a specific event or action that took place after our desire is fulfilled. We already have it. What would imply that it is ours? So he put it this way. He said, I always let my mind roam on many things that could follow the answered prayer. In other words, after your desire is fulfilled. A sing, I single out one that is the most likely to follow the fulfillment of my desire. For example, one simple little thing like shaking of a hand, embracing a person, receiving of a letter, the writing of a check, or whatever would imply the fulfillment of your desire. Neville gives another wonderful example here. He says, for instance, if I single out as an event shaking a man's hand, then that is the only thing I do. I don't shake it, then light a cigarette and do a thousand other things. I simply imagine that I am actually shaking hands and keeping the act going over and over and over again until the imaginary act has all the feeling of reality. The event must always imply the fulfillment of your wish, that you already have it. Always construct an event which you believe you would naturally encounter following the fulfillment of your desire. Now, remember, you want to bring that event, imagining that it's already yours and you're having a specific experience implying that it is yours, in that meditative alpha state. 
And again, I'll attach videos about meditation to help you with that. Neville puts it this way. You immobilize the the physical body and induce that drowsy state. Then mentally feel yourself right into the proposed action. Imagining all the while that you are actually performing the action here and now. Key point. You must participate. In the, imagine, in the imaginary action. Not merely stand back and look on, but feel that you are actually performing the action so that the imaginary sensation is real to you. And again, that is the point of dwelling in and feeling and thinking from that desire in your imagination and experiencing and living from it rather than looking afar of it that we talked about earlier. I hope this bonus has helped you, and I look forward to our next chapter covering the powerful book, The Power of Awareness.